a little bit, TID funding, uh, the landscape, and EPA resolution, and library, law library. Well beaten subjects here. All right, if you talk too fast, I'll let you tell us. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We're on. Okay, I will call this meeting of the Sunny County Commission order for Tuesday, February 6, 2018. Please join me in the pledge. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner Thomas. Heavenly Father, uh, we appreciate uh, all that you do for us, especially keeping all the township, county, and state uh, workers uh, safe who are working to keep us safe. <coughs> That's our special request for today. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, how about a roll call? Commissioner Kirshner? Here. Commissioner Thomas? Here. Commissioner Stacy? Here. Okay, I'll accept the motion to approve the digital audio video recording of our previous meeting held on January 30th, 2018. So moved. Okay. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Stacy? Yes. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Kirschner? Yes. So we do have a number of adjustments to the uh, agenda, a few, a few items uh, other than the Justice Center. So let's start with the Justice Center, Commissioner Stacy, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Um, Lady Justice is still a lady in waiting um, when we know there's a crane scheduled with as much advance notice as possible we'll let everybody know but that's that's what we got so far um, lighting again I think I went over these dates last week but just to emphasize the next uh, exciting things coming up besides just the finishing of the building um, they're going to do the lighting on the evening of March 9th which is a Friday and then an open house to the public so you can see all facets of the Interior of the building, um, prior to any documents and things being moved in, that will be on Saturday, March 10th. Probably at 10 to 2 at this plan. Uh, we'll leave it at that, 10 to 2. Um, we may, might adjust that time frame if something else comes up we learn about, but that's kind of what was said at the meeting uh, last week or the end of the month, whatever that was. But uh, that's really about it. Nothing here, Hearing nothing but good comments on the, on the cupola and all, all of that good stuff. And... Uh, Ribbon cutting, we'll be shooting for a date to announce soon in May, and we'll do the time capsule with the ribbon cutting, with the formal ribbon cutting at that time. Okay. Thank you. Uh, children and family first, I just kind of wanted to bring everybody up to date on that. Uh, it's a regular uh, monthly meeting. Uh, one thing that there, there were a number of discussions, but uh, one thing I think the Commission needs to know is that there, we have had since June of 15 a 62 percent increase in foster care children. Uh, we now in the county have 54 children in foster care. Uh, so they are going to try to set up a meeting with a uh, uh, state rep and state senator to kind of go over uh, the current situation with them uh, whenever possible. Uh, so that's kind of an update on sending county family and children first council. Commissioner Tom, uh, Medicaid, what? Uh, yes, um, wanted to let you know, I think I sent out an email yesterday, <coughs> that due to uh, the revised House Bill 69, we received an additional uh, payment in for the Medicaid tax. Let me see what that dollar was, 176000 And show you how me out that there's additional one. So yeah, at in July, if the tax revenues for the state of Ohio achieve their goal, then the, the uh, administration will make another 30 million available. This last tranche was 50 million for transition funds away from the managed care tax, uh, sales tax. Uh, and if sales tax revenue comes in as as hoped, and the $30 million is made available, then we will receive another tranche in July of up to 105000 So, um, it could be, that's the high, high amount. Uh, if, if tax revenues are less, then they'll make less available. But, you know, that was the compromise with the administration on the transition funds. Now, from your understanding, is this an ongoing? Done. That's it. That's, that's it after that. One more time. Okay, and this is for 18. 
It's not. They're not. They're not projecting it to be 419. Yeah, nothing's happening. So what does that give us total? Then we had uh, how much of the gig? We accrued some for 17. Is that right? Yes, we put a okay. hundred or 300 and. $1,517 in. Which was June. about the amount that we could have expected had things stayed the same. Yep. Okay, and now we had how much after that? So with the uh, carryover of what we had from last year plus the which new was payment. How, which was how much? Uh, beginning balance was $150,758.50. And then with the two payments we got in, um, it takes our balance in that fund right now to 779000 Two hundred ninety-one dollars and ninety-four cents. Well, that is actually at or above what we had in previous years, isn't that in total? It's yeah, it's about close. Very close. It was very close to the Medicare. To yes, the Medicare. So, yeah, because yes. that was seven. Uh, yeah, seven yeah. fifty. Seven fifty. A little above seven fifty yeah. or something. Yeah. Okay, so now the question is, how do we want to accrue it? Yeah, because I, I remember we talked about potentially doing the stabilization fund, which I did ask Julie to. Um, set one up. We don't have to use it, but at least it's set up and ready. So I wanted to kind of see what your thoughts was on what we currently have. Is do you want me to move anything to the general fund? You want me to wait to see how things are going? Um, I kind of remember a couple conversations about monthly or quarterly. So I just wanted to verify. Okay. So what happened last year? Uh, is that come December we made an adjustment to the general fund of somewhere in the range of seven hundred thousand. That, that really doesn't allow us to manage the way that we should, at least in my opinion. So, uh, if we know that we have $700,000 in total, we ought to accrue it at least quarterly or maybe monthly. I don't I guess it's your pleasure, guys. What do you think? I think quarterly might be the, a little less paperwork, a little less time, and easier tracking it. I okay. don't know, maybe it doesn't matter, but... All right. So, just, I mean, that's good. Just as long process. as we do accrue and there isn't there are any big surprises in December. Yeah. Now, as far as the stabilization fund, we certified how much at the beginning of this year? 18 2 For general fund? Yeah. Uh, 17 5 We certified 17 yeah. 5 and our budget is how much? Six, 16, yeah. 16 8 Yeah, something I have to go grab my paper. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, stabilization fund, uh, you know, what we try to pay a little bit forward here. I mean, we want to do the opposite, uh, the opposite as to what our government seems to do, and that is that our kids are going to need to pay into the future for our for our spending. So, what I'd like to do is put some of that money aside into an operating uh, operating fund for when and if there is a downturn, so that there's some money available only for operations. Um, and you know, we, I know we talked about wanting to wait to see how things worked out, et cetera, but I, but I do think we have enough as, excess funds at this point to move some amount of money over and to start doing that on a regular basis. So if there's a downturn, there is a fund available from which to draw uh, so that we can keep services as they should be. So. Um, yeah, I just, I just wanted to take a peek at the first quarter sales tax numbers. So, I mean, I, I think this is, for me, it's an April conversation. I don't, you know, the money's not leaking out anywhere. So, um, you know, I would like, you know, okay, so ultimately my goal would be to earmark the whole transition funds into that. We can do up to 5%. And, and I agree, we, we want to leave the county better than we arrived. Right. And it's, you know, we've had a long history of good financial stewardship. So, uh, you know, we want to pass that along to whoever follows us. I just, I just want to make sure that, you know, we, we know what the sales tax dollars are. That's fine. Are right? That's fine. Quarter. As long as we keep it on the agenda, as long yeah, as we keep our eye on the wall. I'm with you. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, right. I mean that that along with the fact that we have we have put significant dollars away for uh, deferred maintenance for some buildings. Um, so that money is put aside, and now we need to talk about some operating money. So I. Uh, mm -hmm. And, right. uh, and elections equipment money is that aside. You know, and elections separate from. Hopefully we'll get. Well. I don't know. Has there been any more talk about that? Yeah, there? they're still working on. Still working on that. Separate right, about, about the match specifically. Yeah. Yeah, there was an, a separate bill introduced that would fund the election equipment. That would fund it all. Yeah. And we've got how much put aside? Five hundred. Five hundred. So that's a conversation that's still being had. Yeah, yeah that would be a nice. Uh, that would be a nice surprise. A nice give back. 
and sh we should by April know what purchase orders um, for 17 get up closed. They usually get closed by the end of March, so and we'll have a good idea of the actual carryovers for 17. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Good. okay. Yeah, that's true. And you have some security issues at uh, DJFS. Um. Yes. Kathy Oliver sent me a quote. They've been they've been trying to keep their system up and running. It was installed in. Uh, 2001, if I remember the conversation correctly. Um, they've been buying kind of old system parts and pieces Patches, to keep it yeah. going. So uh, the company has given her a quote to update the system, not, not changing everything, but new software, uh, some of the new hardware, and the total is... The total is twenty-six thousand one hundred dollars and ninety-five cents. Um, she said she checked into another company, and obviously it'd be just about twice as much if we tried to put in a new, a new system. system. That's what I was going to yeah. ask. Okay, yeah. but so. okay. So the, the the obvious question to that is: Is there any guarantees with uh, with the patches that we're talking about here, buying new equipment or buying equipment to add to the existing equipment? Right. Is, is there any sense how long that will last versus a new system? Um, well, the way she made it sound is this, the guts are going to be all new. Okay. But like the hardware can stay the same that's running the door locks and everything else the can stay the same. All okay. the fobs, yeah. It's just getting, we're getting an update or an upgrade. Okay. So. Um, and I take it she's asking for all this. She doesn't have any of this in her operating money. Okay. The, um, is there anything with with that that changes once the park district opens up their space? Or she does something? she does not want fobs. Oh, okay. So well, their door that door goes right into the yeah to their space. It's a little different than yep. And and the number of employees is drastically mm -hmm. different. Yeah, because they're they're having to make sure they key them because not all of the locks are working. So they're staying over making sure they're all keyed locked. Because were there any other bids for this? Any other companies come in to look at? upgrading it uh, yeah she did she had one and actually we were going to have our IT guy uh, he's got starting to get into that he was going to go out and look to look at it to see okay. what he would thought but he hadn't had a chance with you know the different projects he's got going on so um, what's your pleasure folks more information make a decision yeah I'm, I'm okay it. with it and my only observation is uh, you know Last year, we, we kind of started warning people, if you've got things that are capital budget, at least give us some heads up, uh, you know, and this is, we're at February, what was it, 5th, and already we've got a capital request that mm -hmm. hadn't been on my radar screen at all. Right. So I think, you know, we continue to ask to, you know, give us line of sight on, so we can budget for it right. and we can prepare. You know, I, you know, I don't think we ever get to a point where we're denying capital requests because they didn't tell us about it. But, right. you know, we, we want to get better. And I, I think, you know, clearly she, this was on her mind for a while. Yeah, and I'm trying to. Could, could have made it, you know, some kind of wish list to us or put it on our radar screen. That's my only observation. Okay. I'm, but I'm, I'm willing to. Is that a motion? Yes, yeah, a motion. Okay. I'll second. <laughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Stacy? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. Kirshner? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? What do you have left? Do you have anything? Uh, I don't think so. Commissioner Thomas? Okay. A couple things. I, it, it's all stuff we've, we've talked about, but we can put a, uh, a finish on some of these things, I think. Uh, we talked about CHIP uh, last week, I believe, and the three partners in CHIP are Seneca County, City of Tiffin, City of Fostoria, and uh, you know, WSOS administers it for us, and Fostoria is kind of the fiscal agent, to kind of put it generally. Uh, and Fostoria wants to continue as the, the agent for the partnerships uh, and continue to contract with WSOS. Uh, you know, so uh, I talked to Charlene and I talked to Fostoria, and everybody's amenable to that. So. Um, I think we probably need some kind of formal ratification of that idea, if you guys are okay with that, that 
we enter into the partnership, one, and two, that uh, Fostoria is uh, involved. I don't know what procedurally this is what we've been doing. Do we need to ratify that? They'll get me a copy of the contract and I pull it and we'll authorize that. Okay. Uh, yeah, they come with property yeah. agreement two yeah. years or something. Yeah, very good. But in order to move ahead, we needed to make those couple decisions. Yeah. Yeah. And I support, cause you attended the meetings and, and did the, and appreciate that. Talk to the parties of interest and that kind of thing. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no objection. And we will we'll keep regional planning involved because they are our grant and housing mm -hmm. kind of agency for the county. So they'll they'll stay involved, but uh, it's a way to for us to help support Fostoria. They get some admin funds. Uh, last year, or last couple of years, it's been eight thousand dollars a year. So um, Mayor Keck Clear has agreed to take that on. So. Uh, Landscape. We had that in here last week. Uh, any any thoughts on that? Uh, I guess my recommendation is that we do the the first thirty five thousand to fix the sidewalks and uh, to and cover the the front. Uh, deferring what's on Court Street until we get a design from the downtown committee and make sure that what we're doing on Court Street matches the what the design downtown design committee is, is recommending but I would like to give John a green light on getting the sidewalks across uh, the front of the lawn and repairing the damaged sidewalks around Gibby and out front I call it the block O where the light pole is. Okay. We need some action on that? We um, we're trying to get and I think I've got a date by the emails I saw from one set yesterday for the sign committee to meet. Is there, I don't know that there will or wouldn't be any thing in conjunction with that. I agree with your thought on the sidewalk. I would like to leave Court Street, get it back to, you know, the contractor get it back to, you know, existing condition when they started the construction and not spend the money on that because if something becomes of that in the future, yes, it'd be nice if it was wider and all that, but can't I just, that expense I'd rather not do. Yeah. So I agree with that. But I don't know, there, would there be, foreseeing reason you want to see what the sign, sign yeah. with well, you know if we're talking about some type of outside yeah, the landscaping piece. committee talked about that and we were hoping that the uh, the sign committee would would have a recommendation and we would find the spot okay and who works for me then and then <laughs> you know and then that's you don't want to do that you're going to say too bad put it where you no, want no <laughs> we, we we totally anticipate that okay. what, that you'll be coming forward with a, a sign and uh on some kind of recommendation we have the 35,000 approved there's uh, no I'll money set aside for yeah, it. Yeah, I have to get it appropriated. Okay. So I can do that Tuesday? Or okay. And this, I guess the sensitive question is, is it a <clears throat> 7525? Um, I think it's, there's not been any conversation that okay. way. The, the, the judges have offered to come forward, but uh, they have made, they've also offered to maybe do some security lighting on Court Street. So... Well, I think we should at least ask the question because we're at the point now where the building is pretty, I mean, the building has been agreed to and we put a maximum on that, as you know, but then there was also a conversation that any uh, common areas mm -hmm. would be a 75-25 uh, split for their amounts. It won't be 75-25 because with the entire uh, square footage with the annex, et cetera, it'll be yeah. something more like probably 80-20. 80 20, 80 20 or something, yeah. But at least we ought to ask the question. And I think, because you know, we don't know what we're going to get into with the signs, too. Um, so I think that's a conversation we need to have with the city at some point here. Yeah. We'll As they read it in the paper tomorrow. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but I think we just need to approach that. We can you know, call Mayor yeah. or Dale up. And yeah, I mean, it's a civil conversation. I, I don't know the answer to it, and I'm not asking them for anything at this <laughs> point. I'm just saying that you know, the original conversation was that we would share common area costs. Yeah. So this to me is a common area. Yeah. I think there are, are parts of it that are on us. You know, the oh. various round Gibby and uh, the sidewalks out front. Sure. I think those are on us. So I do too. Do. I, I mean, all the things that were part of the contract, I'm fine with because that's what we agreed to. But if we're getting into, uh, you know, if we're getting into some additional detail, then we all at least have the conversation. Okay. 
law library you had here. Yeah, so um, I was waiting to see if we had somewhat to the consensus. Uh, Mike, you had originally, not originally, but somewhere, one of the iterations was was to put uh, the law library where uh, victim's assistance was yeah. and public guardian, those That's, two spaces. Yeah, they, well, that, that was one that they felt more comfortable with. Yeah. And, and so it, the, 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 the vibe is that that's going to be good. Okay. So we need to okay. start moving on that. And victim assistance is in there until when, though? They're gone. Victims is gone. It's gone. public guardian that won't be out until... Okay, well, somebody. I knew somebody yeah. was occupying that office. The downstairs office. Right, is and that's the one she wanted. On how long are they going to be there? Until the annex is done. She's going to be moving in when, with uh, juvenile probate. Okay. But but I, I've had a conversation uh, with Jenny, and you know she's willing to move up to victim's assistance in the interim, so she has a place to go because she's going to have to leave the annex. Uh, but she's going to need internet and a few few things that I think we can figure out because that was a functioning off office yeah. not that long ago. But I think we're going to need to authorize Stacy to do some carpet and paint because the carpet came out when victim's assistance came out. We have the law library board on board with this, if you will. Okay. <laughs> I, mean, I thought it was you know who the, you know who the <laughs> well, I don't want you know to who's on the board. Yeah. <laughs> What I don't want to do is spend the money. If no, we're no, they're, that yeah, they, be, they, they no. understand that. So, <laughs> it, that that's the, the the opportunity, the best opportunity they have. Okay. So, um, they they had some. They want both spaces. They want the public space to be on the first floor, and they some of the older books and some of the meeting rooms upstairs. And they've met with Derek Devine, right. and he's willing to use the grand jury room for the law library sure, so sure. more books can be, go in there and they can use that meeting space. So everybody is, is cooperative and, and on, on the same. Okay. Well, you know, eventually we're going to have to do something with the door and access. Yeah, and, there are some security and, issues, et cetera, but I think that they, from what I, you know, the conversation was very um, engaging and, and people were in agreement that that would be all right. So Yeah, so we'll have to work through a few more things with the health department and the building and the entrance, and which we all know, but that's... It, well, the first step is getting the old victim's assistance painted and carpet down. We've had carpet approved once. We did, and when that kind of got stalled, we used it as a, in a conference room in the building because it needed it, so, so we have to... I'd like it to match the Justice Center carpet. So we, we have the same blocks everywhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> might be some of them. We might have some extras. <laughs> right. Might be some of those around. <laughs> So if you guys are okay with that, we can proceed and we can make that. I'm okay, with, yeah. it. I'm okay with getting it resolved. Yeah. Yes. I'll get some prices for you. And All right. Yeah. Start moving forward. Uh, the TID. There was a question about uh, seed money and financing the TID on an ongoing basis. Um, we formed the TID. It's a col collaborative effort between the engineer, the auditor, the two cities, and the county. Um, there's going to be some minimal operating expenses to the TID because it is a separate political entity. Uh, right. Some audits and some legal fees that could happen periodically. So as a funding mechanism, my recommendation is that the county put in uh, $5,000 for seed money and then anyone who utilizes the TID, be the City of Tiffin or City of Fostoria or the county, contributes 1000 in that year. We think that annually or every other year there'll be a, a, a grant opportunity. You know, the, the, the city has been recently successful in getting a 200 plus thousand dollar grant that's new resources into the county. So uh, I think all the players are amenable to that funding schematic. If for any reason we would uh, disband the TID, uh, that residual would come back to the county would be my recommendation. And if it gets any more complex, if we do some, you know, if we put a turnpike into Finn or a high level bridge or something and use it to, then we're gonna have to revisit it because it's gonna become more complicated. But as long as it remains a simple entity as it is, we just need some money in there this, to cover operating. This is still a maximum of 250,000 a year, right? That's point. what I understand. Okay, and that's where it's been. And we have an opportunity to reapply every year for that. That's, that's what I understand. Okay. All right. Well, I, yeah. I mean, I'm okay with you know, five thousand dollars for administrative fees. The only 
The only concern that I have is if it's specific to the city of Tiffin, the improvement that is, then I would think they would want to, or if it's specific to the city of Fostoria, yeah, or, if what I, or if it's specific to a certain area, they ought to jump in a little bit. Yeah, what I'm recommending is that they would pay a success fee. If they get the, if they get the grant, they'll put a thousand dollars in the kitty. Okay. So the so. seed, the seed money of five, five, we put in to get things rolling. But let's say the project's ours, would we also then add a thousand like the others? I or? think so. If Mark, I mean, if Mark, it would be Mark, right? If Mark did a project, he would put in a thousand. If um, Keckler did a project, he put in a thousand, and. You know, assuming it's kind of a 250, you know, annually kind of thing, then that would probably, you know, cover our operating costs and should get us five years down the road. Now, if we decide to use the TID for something more complicated, then we're going to have to have a more robust understanding. Charlene's administering it, you know, at no additional admin cost, uh, and SIDEC uh, has been doing some of the grant writing at no admin cost. The city was the beneficiary of the first grant. So this is really so, just for audit and council, right? If we would need out, outside council, which is not at all clear, and Julie's not sure if it's going to be an every other year audit. That's kind of what she thinks, and so it could be operating costs of under a thousand dollars a year. So, all right. So, uh, can I get a motion to? Uh, I will move that. Okay. S second. Okay. Roll call, please. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Stacy? Yes. Commissioner Kirsten? Yes. And then the last thing I have is uh, the resolution uh, um, towards the OEPA on the VW um, settlement for, you know, we, you had recommended that we do a, re a resolution last week. So uh, just to, to give that uh, a little more uh, emphasis. Uh, Seneca County is a forward leading county that evalu evaluates progressive ideas, um, whereas we've uh, formed a joint parking committee uh, with local judicial and business representatives, and whereas the committee has contemplated the future of parking in the county seat and the vicinity of vital county offices, and whereas it has been noted that emerging technology in the automotive industry may impact parking, um, and that we should have evaluate these forces, and whereas Volkswagen has entered into a settlement agreement to mitigate uh, emissions violations, uh, be it resolved, the commissioners uh, object to the OEPA's plan, mitigation plan, because it prohibits many counties from applying for funds from the plan, uh, funds that could provide clean air infrastructure like electric vehicle charging stations. Uh, the Seneca County Commissioners would recommend that the OEPA create a competitive funding round for rural counties uh, with 10% of the mitigation funds, um, and then we enter that into the docket. So, have, have we coordinated this with the CCAO at all to ask other commission boards to? Uh, I have. I them? asked them, and they weren't aware of it. Okay. So then they went in and did a write-up and circulated it last week, last okay. Friday. It came out on their bulletin. Uh, they didn't take a position on it. Of course, they've got counties that are going to be beneficiaries and counties right. that aren't. But uh, they, it wasn't on their radar screen. It is now. And uh, I've copied them on my correspondence. Uh, they have one other county that's uh, had some ob objection, Clark County, I think. So it, it could get a little bit of traction here. Uh, you know, the problem is it's just kind of the endemic thing of, of denying resources to the rural counties. And we need to object at every possible opportunity. Could we get a resolution together for ODOT as well? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> We just have one standing one. <laughs> that title that you want to have? Okay, so that you will wordsmith that, but the gist is is that we're asking them to consider us as part of the settlement funds for rural counties to get part of that Volkswagen settlement. Right. Okay. They're getting seventy five million dollars and you know, I, I, I never like to identify a problem and not identify a solution. Sure. So I'm recommending that they just take ten percent of the funds and put it into a competitive funding round that is available to the rest of the state. All right. And you know, I don't mind losing in a competitive funding right round, but I, I don't want to be denied access to one. She is the table, at least. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Is that a second? Yes. Roll call, please. <laughs> Commissioner Stacy. Yes. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Kirshner. Yes. Okay. Uh, anything else? No. Thank you very much. All right. In respect for Kathy's time, I think we'll go to the back before we do new business. Is there anything else that? Um, 
that's going to take decisions and resolutions in the new business area? Um, Much discussion or anything? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Okay. That uh, the executive is uh, pending litigation and uh, property. Do we? Can we go in for both, or do we have to come in and go out? No, as long as we state them. As long as we state them. Okay. Okay, so I will accept a motion to go to executive session for pending litigation and property, potential property purchase. So moved. Second. Roll call for me, please. Commissioner Stacey? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Commissioner Kirchner? Yes. Okay. You guys sticking around? Yeah. Okay. You might get one. I can't speak.